This is Tall Tale TV, your podcast for sci-fi and fantasy short stories. Deus Ex Machina, written by Elaine Villar Madruga, translated by Toshia Kame, performed by Chris Heron. They wanted a god. Maybe they had lost their god by some twist of history. Or maybe in an unexpected turn of events. Or maybe at someone's hands. Or who knows. They didn't remember it themselves. But the truth was that there was no god. That they had no memory of ever having worshipped a god. No one in Ador gazed up at the stars with questions or even with one of those devotions we earthlings would find so old. No one believed. Ador was a quiet place. Its bubble forests, its winged birds like infinite loops, its trees inverted roots, its people so similar to ours with large eyes their elders' clothes that hung in tatters as long as time itself, and their foreheads full of purple holes, all silent, in search of a god. They said only in silence would they be able to find what they had lost. When we tried to engage them in a dialogue, the briefest one, they would point with three fingers towards the sky and click their twin tongues in disgust. Silence, they told us. We didn't know what else to say. We seek God's voice. I don't know whose idea it was. I suppose it was ours. All good ideas are supposed to be ours. We decided to sell them our God. What did it matter? We didn't need a God. We needed a door's land, its luminous, fertile soils, and the food that grew within and didn't poison our cells, as happened before when we tried to use Akla's oceans. As thousands of children died and mothers moaned, Civil war erupted and threatened to tear us into pieces. Then, a half-peace on Earth was somehow achieved, but it was always precarious, even after so many years had passed since that event. A request for peace ran aground, so only one more cycle of famine was enough to trigger cannibalism among our people and we all began to see food in our neighbors' arms, legs, eyes. Only one cycle, and we would return to the primitive's hole. We needed a door's water, that liquid without radiation, and the clean earth, the land that could save us from cannibalism, from walking in herds like wild beasts. The earth that could keep us away from the memory of poisoned children in Akla, and two million people with liver, stomach, esophagus, and throat cancer. Eight million starved to death. Thirty-six thousand every day chose a rope, a maser on the forehead, a jump from a macro building. A door was our Eden. A door had the manna we needed. The idea was ours. In exchange, our God for all their food, for their vassalage and service. In other words, our God for their slavery. They wanted it, and we made it to our image and likeness. One of the many deities we had discarded the carpenter, the man nailed to the cross for reasons that certainly don't matter now and perhaps never mattered, the one we got tired of, the one who ignores pleas and only replies with the long spit of his silence. 
feel remorse? We? About what? The people of Ador, with their elders at the front, kissed our hands, called us fathers, dressed us in their herbal finery, and knelt to allow us to pass. We brought them their god, their new god. Soon we saw them bending in the furrows for us and lifting the earth from its nuclear ruins, offering us everything we longed for and much more, while their god smiled at them from the thorns with a thirsty beggar's face as he did for us so long ago. And they were happy. Each morning, the machine passes through the fields of a door filled with their men who work for the earth. The machine from which their god hangs with a dead man's lazy smile and then descends once a day over the silver fields for a fleeting second to wipe sweat and discouragement from native bodies and souls. Only once a day, but it's enough for them because they hear the voice again and they no longer need to find something in silence. And we're happy to be human. We're pleased the people of Ador are so well suited to our golden reality. It pleases us to know there are no longer poisoned children, threats of cannibalism, or tribes of madmen wandering forests on earth in search of meat, water, or seed. But sometimes... Sometimes it's better not to remember why we gaze at the sky and find nothing. Why do we ask for silence with a simple glance or a click of the tongue? When the people of Ador ask us, why do we say, It's nothing. You've got a pretty good idea. I just want to hear... But the word is interrupted. Hear what? Hear nothing, if that's the right price for life. Surely God will understand. Elaine Villar Madruga is a Cuban poet, fiction writer, and playwright whose work has appeared in numerous literary journals and anthologies around the globe. She has authored more than 30 books, most recently Los Años del Silencio, 2019. Translated by Toshia Kame, Elaine's short stories and poems have appeared in venues such as The Bitter Oleander, the magazine of fantasy and science fiction, and Starline. Deus Ex Machina previously appeared in Light Lit One. Hey guys, what a haunting story. I absolutely loved the way that this played out. The idea that what would you do if your people were all starving? Would you be okay enslaving another race, even if they wanted it? Would you be willing to forsake your religion and belief system? This story was just so good. I love Elaine Villar Madruga's work. And she actually recently had another story on the channel if you did like this one. The Doll's House. I'll leave a link to it down in the description in case you'd like to hear it. It was really good as well. And if you did like this story, be sure to give a thumbs up or a comment if you're on YouTube or Facebook. Or if you're listening to the podcast version, you could leave a review over on Apple Podcasts. And of course, be sure to subscribe. I'm Chris Heron, and that's it for today's Tall Tale TV.